Okay, good morning. Thanks everybody for uh, tuning in today, Sunday morning. Just uh, curious here where everybody's tuning in from. I'm here in Los Angeles today. You can go ahead in the uh, comment section and and let me know. Love to see where uh, you're tuning in from. Anybody? Rucker, are you there? I see that you're here, the bot father. <clears throat> so as we uh, kind of progress today, all right, Oregon, thanks so much, Carolyn. I guess you can you can hear me okay? Denmark's in here, awesome. Great. I'll make sure I cover how to get to Palau from uh, from Europe, South Korea. Awesome. Camp Casey, South Korea. All right. Thanks for your service, Brad. I'm assuming military there could be off. Right on. Bahrain. Wow. Okay. Cool. Cool. Unexpected there. Nice. Anybody coming, planning on coming to Palau in the next, uh, like maybe 12 months, next year? What are the time frames you guys are looking at? Nicholas, Chile again. Okay, I'm gonna put a note on there. Uh, South Korea, uh, South America. Cover that. Just giving people one or maybe another minute and we'll get, jump into the, uh, um, the heart and soul of this. Carolyn, awesome. April 2019. Brad, next summer. Cool. Very good. All right. Let's, uh, we'd like to start on time at Palau Dive Adventures. So let's, let's get this started here. I'll probably go back and forth between me talking live and a very brief um, kind of slideshow I have. That way uh, you guys will have something to kind of look at too and see some, for the people who are the visual learners, uh, get something to wrap your head around. So let's uh, take a quick little look here um, and jump into um, what everybody's here for today. Got to switch a screen here and uh, it's going to load up here one of our Google Slides. Hopefully everybody can see that there. I'm trying to get to the next slide here. But basically what we're going to talk about today is the, uh, the tips and tricks, like how to, what are the best ways to um, get to Palau and some things like that. So what you might just so you know who, you, who Palau Dive Adventures is and who we are, we're a dive shop in Palau. So we're not a, a travel agency, anything like that. We're just trying to facilitate uh, people with the best routes today to get in and out of Palau. So these are just kind of some of the past um, comments, what people have uh, talked about us. Please do your own research about uh, Palau and who you're diving with. Uh, we are the top rated dive shop in Palau. Uh, we keep our groups super small. Um, well, you know, no more than 10 people every week. And we honestly just try to match the amazing beauty of Palau with the best service we can possibly provide. Um, a lot of people say the hardest part they ever had to do with us is um, just roll off of the back of the boat. Um, we valet your gear all week, take care of everything there. Um, so it makes it real easy. There's a little quote on the bottom there from our founder of Palau Dive Adventures, Jason. He's a local Palauan. And his goal has always been that, you know, you come to Palau as a guest and leave as family. We've had a lot of repeat um, guests coming to Palau, and uh, there's often a lot of tears shed at the airport. Um, but uh, that's kind of um, a little bit who we are today, trying to uh, not give you any uh, headaches when you're trying to book a flight for Palau. 
Uh, people get tied up on like some, you know, the different routes that are in there. Today, you're really lucky because there's probably about five airlines going in and out of Palau. Before, you really only had two choices to get in and out of Palau, and it was on United, and you're either connecting through Guam or Manila. Uh, today, uh, there are five different hubs, and I'll go over all of those. So uh, what we're going to cover today is the airlines. We'll go over the, the five different airlines. I'm going to show you how to save a little bit of money on the flights. And sometimes the cheapest flight always isn't the best. And I'll go into that detail a little bit more. And we're going to look at some arrival times in and out of Palau and how you can save on some hotel nights there. That helps. And maybe not make you as tired um, coming or going from Palau. And another tool that we like to use is Google Flights. And uh, how many people have... Uh, heard of Google Flights or used it, maybe you could just kind of pop in in the comment section. But um, it's cool. It's uh, You get to see like a, a two-month window of what the costs are on different airlines. But one little drawback that I've seen on Google Flights is they don't have every flight in and out of Palau. Um, specifically, China Airlines isn't listed on them. So that's uh but we'll 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 delve a little deeper into that. So let's take a quick look. Where kind of obviously to figure out how to get to Palau, you have to know where Palau is. So Palau is its own nation. It's its own country, everything like that. So it's located, it's just a little speck in the ocean between the Philippines and Guam. Uh, there's actually a dive spot in Palau um, called Peleliu Corner. It's where the Pacific Ocean and the Philippine Sea come together. So all the yellow dots on the screen here are, are basically the hubs in and out of Palau. So the traditional hub, Guam. Uh, South Korea is a great hub. Taiwan, Taipei, uh, Manila. And actually, yeah. So let me go over a little bit on the airlines that that service each of these hubs. Um, Guam is used mainly by United direct flight in and out of Palau. And it's coming in almost every night. Uh, I believe the only night that they're not coming into Palau is Saturday night from, from Guam. Uh, Manila is serviced. Uh, Guam, or I should say, Palau is serviced by Manila on a direct flight on Friday and Tuesday nights with United. That's a good connection. It's a three hour flight from Manila, works real well. Taipei is another, probably our favorite connection with China Airlines because if you can find a China Airlines flight from the west coast of the United States, the east coast of the United States, and also Europe. Uh, I know Rutger from Amsterdam has used China Airlines, um, quick connection into Taipei. Frankfurt has a connection from um, Frankfurt to Taipei to Palau. And you're really only dealing with a, a connection in Taipei and then further on to Palau. So Taipei to Palau is about a three and a half hour flight. The other connection uh, is South Korea Incheon Airport there. And that is serviced by Asiana Airlines and Korean Airlines. For those that are looking at uh, doing a combination trip with the app in Palau, there used to be a direct flight between Palau and Yap with United, that's no longer there. And there's another airline that's doing it called Caroline Island Air. And we can actually book that flight for you. So that is, I still like um, Yap Palau is a great combination trip. And as well as Philippines, Palau is a, a nice combination trip on there. So um, I'm going to send a quick message to somebody, to Rutger here, just making sure everything's uh, covered there. Anything else I need to cover, Rutger? 
he's kind of helping me out on a on a chat window. So just want to make sure that's covered. I can only look at one screen at a time here. But uh, that's kind of the map of uh, the, the basically what we're calling the five hubs in and out of Palau. So this is a, again, just like a quick overview of what I just discussed, China Airlines, quick connection uh, through Taipei. United's got Guam and Manila, Caroline Islands Air, Yap, Asiana, and Korean Air, uh, South Korea there. Pretty easy. So typical cost on a flight in and out of Palau, you're looking anywhere between $1,500 and $1,800. China Airlines is, is our top choice for price. They're usually around the 1500 mark and for their arrival departure times in and out of Palau. So they arrive around 6.30 p.m. and they depart at 7.30 p.m. All the hotels have a checkout time of noon. So, um, you know, you just grab lunch and then head to the airport type deal. Um, it works out. Uh, real well. You don't have to leave in the middle of the night, like 2, 2.30, uh, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, like the other airlines do. And then you end up having to book sometimes as many as two extra nights hotel. So uh, that can cost you anywhere from an extra $300 to um, $800 at the higher end resorts um, for the, the United flights or Asiana Korean Air. On the flight costs, $100 of your flight costs are going to the government of Palau, um, just so you know that. There's no more departure tax or green fees in Palau. China Airlines arrives and departs Palau on Saturdays and Wednesdays. So this makes for a perfect 7, 10, or 14 night trip. When you, if you dive with us, with Palau Dive Adventures, we start all of our trips on Monday. So arriving on Saturday is perfect. You have a day off to rest, and we're going to dive Monday through Friday, um, hit 14 awesome dives through the week, and then um, you can leave on Saturday. So it even gives you some free time in there in your itinerary if you uh, use China Airlines. All right, so this is another thing I, I said I would go over with you. This is Google Flights. I don't know how many people are um, familiar with it. We just came across it maybe six months, a year ago. And again, like I said earlier, the cool thing is you can see a calendar and the costs of the flights that are on there. And again, China Airlines is not listed on here. To, to find a China Airlines flight, you got to go direct to their uh, website, and that's, uh, I believe, china-airlines.com. Uh, they will always, Google always defaults to your location. As you can see, I'm in Los Angeles right now, so that's defaulting to uh, the closest airport to me, LAX. And you can change that, whatever your, your home uh, airport is there. So I said, I think from like, like we have some guests from Denmark, you know, I would look to, if you're trying to come to uh, Palau, I'd look at connecting, you know, maybe some of China Airlines connecting through Amsterdam or Frankfurt. South America is tricky. I'm not going to lie. That um, entails a little bit more. But if, uh, if China Airlines, again, is going in and out of South America, I would definitely look at, um, you know, connecting with them. Um, that would be a good one. Or maybe even like Tokyo, Japan, and then using United from uh, Japan to Guam back to Palau. All righty. Uh, I'm going to, um, I'm going to kind of go back to um, like a live question and answer session here in a second. And I'm going to jump out of this uh, slideshow. If you have any questions for me, I'm at our USA phone number. It's right listed there. You can send a text message there. You can call it. If you want to, uh, you know, message, if your preferred communication message is email, then just jump on 
It's reservations at palaudiveadventures.com. Um, that's another good way to get a hold of us there. Um, so let me jump back here to being live and I can uh, see if you have any other uh, questions. I see, looks like Rucker dropped in a link. Um, if you wanna download, we have a really cool guide we built and it's about a 15, 16 page PDF guide for Palau. If you wanna know about the, the dive sites, the hotels, what other topside activities there are, are to do in Palau, uh, jump in and uh, grab that guide. It's free and it's got a ton of great information in there for you. Um, I'll kind of wrap up with this real quickly. We kind of like to do these every now and then. Are there any other topics you'd like us to discuss either today or in a future webinar, uh, perhaps maybe the, the top dive sites of Palau or anything um, that would interest you per se. You can go over maybe something on the Rock Islands, anything like that. Any comments? No. Oh, visas? Um, sure, if you're coming from um, the United States, you're gonna be given a, a one-year visa um, and all other countries, um, for the most part, you don't need a visa. You're gonna be given a 30-day a tourist visa. And um, yeah, you can just come. Make sure you have your return flight out of uh, Palau. If you're if, if if you're an EU citizen or somebody else, Jellyfish Lake is recovering. There was a drought there in 2016, so um, it's kind of in recovery mode. We're actually gonna. We weren't taking guests there for about two years, and we're kind of looking at maybe starting to go back up there again. There's a few hundred jellyfish there now. There used to be millions, so we're looking at that. I can go over liveaboards at another time, the, the differences between liveaboard and land-based. Uh, that, that would be a good topic, Lisa, to kind of go over. Um, that could be a good little webinar topic one day. I'll. Uh, <clears throat> Maybe Rucker, you can drop the link uh, for the uh, um, our uh, blog post on liveaboard versus land based. There, Mike. Thanks, Lisa. I did plow dive adventures and siren back to back. PDA gives siren or run for the money. Thanks, Mike. We just try to keep it small. Give the best service we can. Thanks so much. Christmas is pretty busy, Lisa. Drop us a, a message to reservations at Palau Dive Adventures as quickly as possible. I know that's that's pretty busy there. Uh, rental gear is extra. It's uh, fifty bucks uh, a day for a full set of gear. Yeah, Lisa, maybe uh, if you could just give me a phone call, maybe later I'll, I'll look up our availability. Um, give me a call at the 310-321-2558. Uh, I'll look it up for you. Work something out. Awesome. Well, I'm going to, I think we're going to wind it up here. I don't want to take too much of your time. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, just. Uh, We'll uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. And again, make sure you grab a copy of our guide. That's a great um, great tool to use there. And uh, we'll leave it there. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for the nice comment too. Appreciate it. You guys have a great Sunday. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.